Hi Stamping Friends! Today I have a Stamp Club project for you that uses the Varied Vases bundle. It has a stamp set and punch that goes with it and we'll be doing a Z-fold card. Um, and we're also going to be using the Subtle Embossing folder. In the background there you might be able to see the texture uh, in that uh, card. So we're going to start with doing the dry embossing for that um, uh, background piece that's done in the Mango Melody. Um, which is one of the brand new colors in the in the catalog. Now the embossing folder we use again is called Subtle and uh, it really is just a beautiful subtle texture in the background. It's one of the um, 3D dynamic uh, embossing, embossing folders so it's supposed to give you a deeper impression and because of that uh, it's recommended that you do a light spray of water onto the piece of cardstock before you run it through. So that's what I'm doing. You can't see the spray bottle um, off camera, but I am spraying the paper just ever so lightly. And you don't want to have too much water on there because it will um, uh, warp the cardstock if you have too much. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just dry emboss this piece right now. So the other important detail to know is that because this is a thick embossing folder, you only use one of the cutting pads instead of two. So you can see I have my base down there and I'm just using the embossing folder with the cardstock and one cutting pad over the top. It's also recommended that you put the seam of the embossing folder uh, going into the Big Shot um, first. So as I mentioned earlier, you don't want to use too much water on your piece. Uh, the example on the right is one where I used more water than I probably should have and it's sort of a little bit warped. Uh, no big deal, you just attach it down with a lot of adhesive, but if you use less water you won't have that problem. So now I'm going to go ahead and start with my stamping and on this card there are a few pieces that are stamped and punched out. One thing that's important to know about this punch is that you actually have to stamp the vases upside down for the punch to be um, oriented correctly or for the image to be oriented correctly so you can punch it out. So you can see I've stamped that um, small little vase on the smoky slate and because I've stamped it upside down I can easily punch it out. Um, if it weren't upside down then I'd have to cut the paper or you know get creative with how I get it to punch um, reasonably. So there are two of those um, punched pieces on this card. One on the main focal piece and one on the inside of the card. So in this photograph you can see the two punched pieces. So the next step um, we're going to do is to stamp the three panels that you see on the card and all three of them have um, the mantle piece on the bottom. So I'm going to be using the Stamparatus uh, to do the mantle pieces so that they'll be perfectly lined up and will look continuous. So you can absolutely do this project without using the Stamparatus. Uh, it does require a lot of blocks because there are a lot of images being used, especially since I'm doing the two-step stamping. And uh, using the Stamparatus can be great for that getting that perfect alignment with one image over the other. So I've set up my Stamparatus with six images on it, and uh, those will be for the mantle piece and for the vases. Mantle piece needs to straddle the bottom of the piece of cardstock. So um, I've set my Stamparatus up uh, with a guide. So I'm going to place my focal piece not but up in the corner, but just a little bit to the left of the corner. And um, now I'm using some temporary adhesive to attach my piece uh, to my uh, work surface uh, so that it stays in place when I do my stamping. And I'm also going to use one of the very strong magnets that comes with the Stamparatus to hold it in place. Now um, I just showed you some uninked uh, stampin' spots and that's what I started with. Um, I took uh, some uninked uh, stampin' spots and I inked them up with the three colors that I'm using. Using the stampin' spots helps to uh, get less ink on the plastic plates of the Stamparatus. So now um, the first uh, time I stamped, I stamped that mantle piece across the bottom and uh, I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper and remove the first layer of ink for the inside stamp of the mantle. So you can see I'm removing it uh, on my scratch paper and then I'm just going to stamp it right in the center and I've lined these up ahead of time so they're perfectly placed. So um, I think I had about 25 people make close to 50 projects doing this, so having the Stamparatus set up this way really helped for people to get their placement just so.
So for each project, uh, each of the three focal pieces needed to be stamped with that mantle piece. And again, the first image is done with full ink and the second image is done with second ink. So I've done the rest of that off camera and then we'll jump to doing the vases. So one of the coolest features of the Stamparatus is that the plastic plates um, can be lifted out and turned around as you saw me doing with that first one and now again with the second one, which means I don't just have two services to put stamps on, I have four. So um, it's really pretty, pretty awesome. So now I'm going to take um, the um, Stampin' Spot with the Mango Melody and I'm going to ink up the um, outline of the vase and I'm going to ink up the uh, inside image that fills in the vase. And I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, blueberry bushel on the outline and then on the inside. And the outline image is going to be full ink, just like how I did the, um, the mantle piece. But the inside piece is going to be stamped off, the way I had the stamped off image on the mantle piece. So I've pulled in that piece of scrap paper and stamped it off, and now I'm uh, stamping the ink. And it's a, going to be a lighter ink than the outside edge, so it just gives it some more dimension. So for my next step, I'm going to focus on stamping the blue flower and the gray foliage. Uh, and it's going to be two-step stamping as well, but just to get me set up, I need to use my gray vase to, uh, to get a, uh, my spacing, so I'll know that the gray foliage is going to actually show up in the right spot. So I'm going to put a pencil mark right at the top of the gray vase, so um, I'll, be, I'll know where to put the mask um, to gauge that my spacing is actually correct for the foliage and I'm going to mask where I have the pencil mark and now I'm putting another mask uh, right above the um, blue flower where the blue flower is going to land. So now I'm doing that because I'm envisioning these vases as being like ceramic vases not glass vases. If they were glass then it wouldn't matter if the uh, stem were showing but I'm trying to hide the stem as if, um, as if it's a ceramic vase. So now I just stamped the two outline images in full ink of the smoky slate and the blueberry bushel and then next I'm going to come in with my full ink and you can see I now I'm turning my uh, plastic plate around. Now uh, incidentally this is a second Stamparatus so I used two Stamparatuses <laughs> for this project with my club. So now I've inked up the smoky slate and I'm going to ink up the blueberry bushel. These are the insides of the flowers or foliage. And these both need to be stamped off again so that the outline image is dark and the inside uh, image is light. So there I've stamped off. And now I'm going to stamp in the inside of the foliage. And next I'm going to stamp off the blue flower and stamp on the inside of the outline image. So next I'm going to mask the Mango Melody vase so that I can uh, stamp the little tulips um, coming out of that vase. And uh, for these images I actually use the pumpkin pie ink and a, a full size ink pad and just regular old stamps attached to acrylic blocks. So um, I'm going to start with the uh, stem and I did the stem three times. and. Um, uh, of course, I did flowers that I punched out as well that are going to go on the outside of the flower too, but these ones I just stamped. So uh, I did three stems and staggered their heights, uh, one tall, one medium, one relatively short. And for the tall one, I wanted to make sure that uh, it didn't, um, the flower when it stamped wouldn't go off the top of the page. So you just want to make sure to leave enough room at the top. So you can see I'm actually changing out the mask because I realized that um, if I used the big mask I couldn't tell um, where the stem should go as far as the side to side. So, um, And then I've added another mask to the bottom so if I inked up the stem and it was too long it wouldn't go off the bottom of the page or show up um, below the, um, the mantle. So now I'm doing my three stems. I did one that's relatively tall, a medium one, and a short one. And I've left enough room at the top, as I mentioned, for the flowers. So I'm going to stamp the uh, outside uh, image of the flowers first in full ink of the pumpkin pie. So I'm doing uh, all three now. And I, I actually put in five on this one, I think. So the three looks nice, but um, I kind of want it to be more filled in. So now I've got the um, 
inside image and I'm going to stamp off and stamp each of those flowers on the inside to fill them in. So just in case it's not obvious, I didn't use the Stamparatus for these images because of course I'm stamping the same image multiple times in different spots and so it wouldn't really work to do the Stamparatus. So now I'm taking the little flower and stamping the outline uh, three times and uh, stamping off the inside uh, image and uh, stamping it the three times and then I'm going to punch each of them out. Those three little flowers are um, what I'm going to be putting on the outside of the card and uh, I attach them to the card with glue dots and of course attach the vase as well with glue dots um, on the final card. So the next thing I'm going to do is stamp my sentiment in the blueberry bushel on one of the panels I uh, stamped at the very beginning of the video. So the last thing I have to do before I can assemble everything is to punch out this last vase. I have stamped it upside down with second inking and now I'm just punching out that little blue vase and I have all my pieces and parts to begin the assembly process. So my card base is a four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half and scored at two and three quarters. And you do want to burnish the uh, score lines really well. Um, so that it's the card folds a little bit better because it tends to want to stand up and I'm also burnishing this piece of blueberry bushel which is the Z portion of the card and then I can begin attaching my pieces. So I've attached all my white panels to the blueberry bushel Z fold piece um, to start with and then I'm going to take my Mango Melody uh, dry embossed piece. I put a bunch of adhesive on the back of that since that was the sort of warped um, one that I showed you at the beginning. And then I'm going to uh, just tie a bow around the, um, the uh, end panel of uh, the card body. And you can see I'm bending it there just a little bit to um, reposition it. I want the tie to be a little bit higher. And then I'm going to go ahead and just snip off the uh, the ends to give them a nice little angled clean edge. So for the next step I'm going to actually attach that Z so I'm going to gauge my positioning by putting that little blue vase in the lower right hand corner and just kind of sitting it there and then I've centered it top to bottom and positioned it as I wanted and you can see I'm putting adhesive um, in those two spots just so that they don't I don't end up uh, having adhesive show up where it doesn't belong and then just on the back side of the Z and then I'm all set with uh, with the basic Z portion of the card and now I'm putting each of my little flowers onto glue dots and uh, the vase uh, as well for the main focal piece the smoky slate vase and it should uh, fit perfectly right there in the center with that gray foliage uh, coming out and then I'm going to put glue dots on my uh, stamped off blue vase stick it where it belongs and then uh, attach my little flowers. Uh, I try to like to stagger them a little bit so they're at different heights and then I'm pretty much done with my card. So I hope you've enjoyed my Z Fold card uh, and uh, just incidentally those who are club members or people receiving free card kits in the mail you will be getting um, some punched vases so you can play with them and you'll just need to find some flowers to go in those vases. And if you're interested in how to get free card kits or become a club member and get free kits in the mail or a free class to go in the mail, um, there are, is uh, details and links in the video description below. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thanks for spending some time with me today and um, look forward to seeing you next time. Happy crafting!